Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at AP Chemistry Unit 7, Section 10, which is all about what happens if you have a mixture that's not necessarily at equilibrium, how you can determine in which direction that mixture is going to go toward the reactants or toward the products. And by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd like to encourage you to do that. That way you'll have uh, access to all of my 100 plus AP Chemistry uh, videos instantly. And you'll also have access to my AP review videos and problem walkthroughs and all kinds of good stuff. Well, back to the, the content here. We can actually take a look at a non-equilibrium mixture and we can calculate something called its reaction quotient. And we can then compare that reaction quotient to the equilibrium constant. And we're going to see if that mixture is at equilibrium or if not, in which direction it's going to go toward the uh, toward the left or toward the right. So let's see how this works. Let's say we have this problem right here where there's a flask that contains 0 0.40 molar nitrogen gas, 0 0.50 molar hydrogen gas, and 0 0.30 molar ammonia gas at 500 degrees Celsius. And they're going to react according to that equation right there and we have an equilibrium constant. So the question is, is the mixture at equilibrium? And if not, in which direction is the mixture going to proceed? What we have to do is take these concentrations here and plug them into the expression for the reaction quotient. Now just so you know, the expression for the reaction quotient looks exactly the same as the expression for the equilibrium constant. It, it's, it's still products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. And so it looks exactly like the equilibrium constant expression would look. The only difference is, since we're not sure that it's at equilibrium, we can't really call it K. We have to call it Q. Q is the reaction quotient. So we're going to plug these numbers into that expression. And looks like ammonia is 0 0.30, so that's going to have to be squared. In the denominator, it's nitrogen, which is 0 0.40 molar. And then the hydrogen is 0 0.50 molar, and that's going to be cubed. So when you key these into your calculator, 0.3 squared divided by 0.4 divided by 0.5 cubed, you'll find that the reaction quotient is 1.8. So now we see that we are not at equilibrium. Because the only way that you can be at equilibrium is if Q equals K. And that's not the case, so we're not at equilibrium. So that answers the first question. The second question says, in which reaction will it proceed? Well, here's how to keep this straight. If Q equals K, it's at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, the reaction is going to go toward the right and make more uh, products, and the reactants will go down. If Q is greater than K, then it's going to go to the left. And you're going to make more reactants and the products will go down. And so since Q is greater than K, then that means it's going to go toward the left. Now some students, in fact a lot of students, have trouble keeping all that straight. So here's what I do. What I do is I take that, that the greater than sign, in this case, and I uh, turn that into a little uh, Pac-Man symbol like this. And so that Pac-Man, perhaps you've played that game before or you've seen it, and you know that the Pac-Man is eating in the direction of going left. And so that tells you that the reaction is going to go to the, to the left. If the other way had been correct, if Q had been less than K, then the Pac-Man, as you can see right there, is going to be going toward the right and the Pac-Man is eating toward the right. So if you use that Pac-Man symbol, that hopefully will help you to keep all of this straight. Let's try another example. We're, uh, we're going to use the same chemical equation here. This time a 2.0 liter flask contains 0.96 moles of nitrogen gas, 0.96 moles of hydrogen gas, and 0 0.10 moles of ammonia gas at 500 degrees Celsius. So this time the question says, as the mixture reacts, which substances will increase in concentration and which ones will decrease in concentration? So same type of problem. We're going to plug these concentrations values here into the Q 
or the reaction quotient expression, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So ammonia, looks like ammonia is 0 0.10 divided by 2 liters. So that's 0.05 molar, and that has to be squared. In the denominator, nitrogen is 0.96 moles divided by 2 liters. So that's 0.48 molar. And then the hydrogen is also 0.96 moles divided by 2 liters. So that is 0.48 molar. But this time it's cubed because there's a coefficient of 3. So when you compute this in your calculator, you find that Q is equal to 0 0.047. So let's compare Q versus K. Q is less than K, isn't it? So do you remember in which direction the reaction is going to go? Well, if you're not sure, just draw on that Pac-Man there, and you can see that, that the Pac-Man is moving to the right. You know, he's going in this direction. So that means that the reaction is going to proceed toward the right. And that means that we're going to increase the amount of ammonia that's present, and the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen are going to decrease. I hope this video has helped you to understand uh, how to work Q versus K problems, and hopefully a nice nifty way to remember uh, how all this works and keep all this straight. Once again, I hope you uh, like my video. If you learned something from this, leave a comment down below. Uh, that really helps the YouTube algorithm, and I do appreciate it. Hope to see you in my next video when we're going to move on to solutions and their equilibrium. Thanks for watching.